Good afternoon, everybody. This is Scott Gillum with you this afternoon going through the beginning option, lessons number three, talking about individual directional trades. I need to remind everybody that all rights reserved for Shadow Trader for 2022. That means the content in this presentation is presented for educational purposes only. It should not be considered as a recommendation to buy or sell any security. Therefore, the information in no way should be considered investment advice. Trading of options involves risk and may not be suitable for all investors. All rights and obligations of the options instrument should be fully understood by you, the individual investor, before entering any trade. All right, in this lesson, we're going to talk about individual options trading. We're going to do a review of that options chain. We're going to talk about the criteria that you may want to look at for individual options. We'll go through an entry setup and criteria. We'll go through an exit or adjustment setup. And we'll also talk about now that you're in this individual equity option, what could happen and what might you want to do with it? So I'm calling this one morphing standalones. All right, for a little bit of a review, this is the options chain, the call option and put option. It's a typical option chain. You've got on one hand, you've got expiration in the middle. You've got strikes next to it. You've got puts on one side. You've got calls on the other side. We've got the bid or the sell price that's wholesale. We've got the ask or buy price that's the retail. That's just a review of what an option chain looks like. So there's your expiration that we're using, the volume, <clears throat> that's how many contracts have been exchanged for the day. Remember, there's a buyer and a seller for every contract. There's your bid and ask, your wholesale and retail price. This is for the call side. There's a column called open interest. <clears throat> These are the existing contracts which are still running at the beginning of the day. Once again, the strike price is listed for you. So you pick up your expiration and you take a look at your strike and then you go left or right to your call or put bid ask pricing. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about the long call the, uh, the right to buy the underlying equity at the strike for the time frame involved to the expiration, that is. We'll talk about the long put, same thing, but using the put side, the right to sell the underlying equity at a certain strike for a given period of time. Then we'll also look at the short call and the short put. One note here, as an individual option, I cannot recommend or take on you selling a call as an individual option. You have unlimited upside risk and your margin requirements are just absolutely too far above anybody's fathoming levels. So we'll talk about the long call. We'll talk about the long put. We'll talk about the short put. And we'll also talk about the short call. Remember, the long, the short call and short put should be put together with another option. All right, here's some nomenclature. Opening the trade. 
buying to open. Typically, it runs this way. November 16 call, buying that to open, you buy at the ask price. Once you have that in your portfolio, how do you get rid of it? Well, you do the other side of the coin, and that's closing the trade. So you sell to close. Those two terms, buy to open, sell to close. They can also be flipped over. You can sell to open and buy to close. Depends on what is the initiating trade and what is the closing trade. So let's talk about long calls. Long calls, the action. Buy to open. Putting it in your portfolio. To sell it, to get rid of it, or to take profits or whatever, you sell to close. What are the rights of a long call option? Well, you can exercise the call, which means that you can ask to have the equity brought into your portfolio. You're going to buy it at the strike price that you're using within the time frame of the expiration. We can also just sell that option back in the market. So you buy to open at one, you sell to close at 150, for an example. The third option is just to allow it to ex expire. Pardon me. The expectation on the purchase of a long call option is bullish, very bullish. You need movement in the underlying to make you a profit. It's got to go from the strike plus your premium you paid and above that for any profit to be made. Basic application for this, start with an at the money, it should say at the money, or slightly out of the money. Time frame, I recommend something around 45 days of time value for it to work. Remember that every day that the equity does not move starts to erode your price, called time decay or theta decay. This type of trade is a debit trade. You pay money to buy this equity, so you pay to play. The risk and the reward in the upper right. Your risk is only the debit that you paid. Your reward, theoretically, it's unlimited. The equity could go to the moon. Well, you've got the right to buy it at, say, 100 bucks, and it's gone to 1000 Your break-even. When do you start to make money? Well, your break-even, or when you start to make money, is the strike that you're using plus the debit that you paid. Add those two numbers together. That's where the equity price has to get to, to, to the point where you start to make money as it goes higher. Some exit points. A planned exit would be a percent gain. Let's say 20, 25, 30%. Another planned exit would be to exercise and buy the equity. How about secondary exits? As we're playing chess, well, if it's not going your way, you could close for a loss. Let's say 50% of the value. Another planned secondary exit would be to adjust to a spread trade. The little graph there is a graph of what a long call looks like. where you have a flat line and then an angled line. Where these two meet is the strike price of your option. At this point, it's a 115. Well, you don't make money starting at 115 because you paid a premium to own this option. So the difference between the 115 strike and your debit, let's say it's $8 is where your break-even 
starts. So at 118.01, you start to make money. But that's a graphical representation of a long call. There's a bigger picture of it with a different strike and a different equity itself. The solid, pardon me, the fatter line is the expiration line, and the thin curved line is the valuation at the current time, today. That changes day after day after day. Also, price after price after price changes. The expiration line never does change. All right, let's talk about the short call. This is the other side of the long. If I buy a call option, I have a right to buy. If I sell a call option, I have an obligation to give up shares. So the actions are sell to open to initiate the trade. And to end the trade, you buy to close. You have an obligation to deliver the equity, 100 shares per contract. If you are assigned, that means that you have to give up the equity at the strike price between whenever you open this up until the expiration date. Why would you go into a short call situation? Well, you're looking for a stagnant to bearish trend. And aside here, if you own the equity and you expect it not to go very much higher than the strike that you're looking at, you can sell a call against your equity. This is what's called a covered call. I own the equity. I'm giving somebody the right to take it at this price for this time frame. Basic application is an out of the money situation with a strike. You'd like to do this with the least amount of time that you can use, and that's less than 30 days. Here, as the equity does not get to your strike, the time decay is to your benefit. This type of trade is a credit trade. The risks and rewards. Theoretically, it has an unlimited risk. The reward that you receive is only the credit of the option that you sold. Where's your break even? Well, your break even, just like the long call, is the strike price plus the credit received. Planned exits, once again. First planned exit, all right, I called it right. I'm going to keep all the credit, so my option is going to expire. Second planned exit, I'm assigned. They take my stock, I make the difference between what I bought the stock for and the strike price plus my credit that I sold the option for. Secondary exits in this short call. If it rises too fast, you can close at a theoretical break even. Or you can adjust this short call into another type of trade called a spread trade. Once again, here's a larger graphical representation of a short call. You make money on this option when the underlying equity does not go above your strike. This is a, I got paid up front to take on the risk that it won't go any higher than my strike. Let's move on to the other side of the options chain, the puts. A long put, just like the long call, 
my actions to open this transaction is buy to open. To get rid of the option in my portfolio, I sell to close. What are my criteria here? Well, I have rights. I have the right to sell my equity between now and the expiration period for the strike that I chose. So I can exercise the put to sell the equity at the strike price. I can also just close this option in the marketplace. So I would sell to close. A third right that you have is allowing this to expire. Remember, long options are debit trades. Therefore, I have bought the right to sell my equity and I've paid a premium. What is the expectation if you buy a put, buy a long put? Well, you expect the equity to go down in price. So it's a bearish trend. <clears throat> Once again, basic application, at the money or slightly out of the money. Time frame, 45 days to make it uh, move enough to have it work. And once again, like the long call, this long put, time decay works against the trade. It's a debit trade, so your risk is only the debit that you pay. Your maximum reward is the strike <clears throat> minus the debit. Remember, equities can go to zero, so it's the maximum reward is the strike minus the debit. Your break even is the strike minus the debit as well. Exit points. <clears throat> Planned exit point, uh, close this at a percent net gain. Or you can exercise and sell your equity at the strike price if that's your desire. Secondary exits close at a loss, some sort of loss, 20, 50 percent, or adjust again into a spread trade. Here's a larger picture of the long put. Note that where the Two lines start to diverge. That's your strike. The thick line is the expiration valuation. The thin line is the current day's uh, valuation of that long put. Let's go on to the short put. Short put, very similar to the short call. But this time we don't have unlimited uh, risk. We have risk from the strike to zero. But the actions are the same as the short call. We sell to open to initiate the trade. We buy to close to eliminate the trade. Our obligation here on a short put, if it is assigned by the put owner, is that we have to take on the equity. We have to buy the equity at the strike price that we're using. The expectations to put on a short put is that we get a stagnant to bullish trend. Don't go below my strike. Don't go below my strike. That's what you should be saying to yourself when you sell a put option. The basic application. We want to do these out of the money where there's value. We'd like to do them in less than 30 days so that we don't run a time risk. Time decay in this case for a short option, just like the, pardon me, short put, just like the short call, works in our favor. This type of trade, once again, is a credit trade. I get paid up front to take on additional risk towards the end. The risk and reward of the trade. My risk is the strike minus the credit. I'll repeat that. My risk is the strike to where I have to buy it for minus the credit. 
my reward is only the credit that I receive. And also, the break-even is the same as the risk, the strike minus the credit received. Exit points here on the short put, just like the short call. If it works out and the equity goes up in price, well, I can let that option expire. It goes to zero at expiration. I keep all the credit. Also, I can be assigned the stock. I now own 100 shares per contract at the strike price. Secondary exits here on the short put. Close this at a theoretical break-even price or adjust it into a spread trade. A larger view. Here's a four square box of the call and the put, both long and short. I'm showing you the deltas because I want you to start thinking in the Greeks. If I have a long call, I have a delta that's less than one, but as the equity goes up in price, that delta should start to approach that plus one value. Gamma, how much on each and every dollar move that goes into uh, the underlying above the first dollar to the second dollar to the third dollar, that gamma adjusts my delta. So gamma should adjust delta positively on long calls. Therefore, gamma is positive. A positive times a positive is positive. Theta. Theta, well, if the equity doesn't move, I lose valuation because there is extrinsic value associated with my option. There's less time for this underlying to get to my long call strike. So theta is negative. Vega, implied volatility. Vega is determined by a 1% move in implied volatility day to day to day. So if implied volatility increases, I would expect that my extrinsic value would increase also. Therefore, Vega is positive. Now let's go to the long put. You can see that the Greeks are the same except for delta. Remember that a long call has a positive delta. A long put has a negative delta. But the effect of gamma is still a positive times a negative makes this more negative as equity price goes down. Theta, as time passes and the underlying does not move, my theta is, or my extrinsic value is reduced, therefore theta is negative. If implied volatility increases, my extrinsic value is pumped into the option, therefore vega is positive. So other than delta, long options have positive gamma, negative theta, positive vega. The other side of the coin is the short side. On a short call, I have a negative delta. And I have a negative gamma. I have a positive theta. I have a negative vega. So they're almost fully reversed. Just a chart that you may want to print out. And as you start to get familiar with the Greeks, use this on your desktop. Greeks do matter. All right, let's talk about you're into a single trade. What could you do from the single trade? Called morphing standalones. Where can we go from here? Adjusting that single option, we'll do some examples. I have a long call. It's a debit trade. I can 
make this into what's called a bull call. So my long call goes to a bull call by selling a call option with a higher strike. It reduces the cost or the debit, but it also caps off the maximum I can make. It still optimizes a bullish trend, but not quite as bullish as just the individual long call. Well, okay, I've got a long call, and it's out 45 days. The equity is starting to flatten, but I still expect it to go higher. Well, I can take that long call, and I can sell a short call either at the same strike or at a higher strike, but in a nearer term expiration. That puts me into what's called a call calendar or a call diagonal. Still optimizing a bullish trend. Maximum risk on both of these is still the debit that you've laid out. Okay, on a credit trade, I've got a short call. And the equity is starting to get close to that short call. I'm becoming risk adverse. So my long call is at one strike. I can add, I can add a call below the strike. For example, I've got a long call at 100. The equity is not going to get to 100. I can add a short call at 95. Now what have I done? I've now put myself in a risk situation. It may not meet all of the debit, but it is going to reduce the debit, but you're going to take on more risk. So morphing a long call into what's called a bear call spread is going to optimize not the bullish trend, but a stagnant to bearish trend. And here the maximum risk is the strike differential minus the credit that you receive from the short call. These are well beyond a beginning options trader's knowledge at this point. All right, let's talk about the long put on a debit trade. I've got a long put looking for the equity to go down, <clears throat> pardon me, down in price. Well, it's not going down fast enough. I can add a short put below my put strike. This is going to still optimize that bearish trend. It's going to reduce the debit that I paid for the long put, but it's going to also cap the potential maximum risk that I could make. <clears throat> I could also put this into what's called a put calendar or diagonal. Take the long put at, one, at a longer dated expiration and sell a put below that long put strike, but in a nearer term expiration. Can be the same strike or a lower strike. One is a calendar, the other is a diagonal. This is still going to optimize the bearish trend. Still going to be a debit trade. That's your risk. Only your risk. Now, if I take that long put that I have, I can add a short put above the long put strike. I've got a long put at 100. I can add a short put at 105. Wait a minute. It's not a bearish trade anymore. 
it now becomes a stagnant to bullish trade because I don't want my equity to go below my short put strike. My long put was my existing position. My additional option is selling a put at a higher strike. This could turn the debit trade to a credit trade, but more than likely it'll just offset some of that debit on the long put. Here your maximum risk is the strike differential minus the credit. All right, that ends lesson number two, the directional trades.